In this video, I am going to talk about a plant growth regulator that will darken your grass, thicken the leaf blade, picking up the grass, enhance your fungicide application, decrease the mowing frequency needs, decreasing the water usage of the grass, making it more drought, heat, shade tolerant, and it suppresses poenia, and when you're overseeding, slows down the existing grass safely so your seed has a fighting chance to germinate. I'm going to go over a product that, I got to be honest with you, I didn't think I'd take it to this level, but this will definitely take your yard to the next level. So let's get started. A couple years ago, when I started my YouTube channel, I thought, you know, I'd be talking about fertilizers, and I'd go to Lowe's, and I'd talk about a few products, and it'd be kind of, yeah. But I got to admit, you guys, holy shit. <laughs> Some of you have blown me away by the quality of yard you're maintaining. Uh, like, I've got a, a Facebook page, and I've got some guys on there, and I encourage you to go there, too. Take some pictures. I want to see some really great yards, and I want to see where you're having challenges and problems, too. I, I'm going to try to keep this as a Facebook page available to everybody at all levels so you can ask questions. But James and Rusty here, look at this. I mean, Rusty's put together a bicentennial yard. This is actually what he did for the 4th of July. And I've seen yard after yard after yard of any every type of grass species, cool season, warm season, and whatnot. And I, you guys are uh, really impressed me. And I never really thought I'd talk about, be talking about these chemicals to you guys. Now, it's not that exclusive. It's not that harsh on your grass or anything else. But these are plant growth regulators. And I gotta admit, this is definitely... Because look, there's some next level shit going on around here and I'm with that. So plant, what plant growth regulators do, they are not a biostimulant. And for those of you who know the channel, I'm not a big biostimulant guy, but I do believe in plant growth regulators. First of all, I'm going to tell you the difference between biostimulants and plant growth regulators. Plant growth regulators, a significant difference. Plant growth regulators are considered a pesticide, and they are regulated by the EPA. They have to go to the EPA and go to every state and get a label for their, essentially a pesticide, though it is a plant growth regulator. Pesticide encompasses herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, and plant growth regulators. In that process, they have to show efficacy data. In other words, if it does not work at the rates, they also have to submit those rates. It's a very long seven-year process in some cases. And there's, there's a reason why I'm going here, so stick with me. They have to prove that it works. Okay? I, I really need you guys to let that sink in because I, I, I did sell products for a while. And I can tell you with biostimulants, and this is where the chip on my shoulder is with biostimulants, they are sold on a higher margin. The reason, and they are generally when you get salespeople pushing biostimulants, like they told me when I was selling, it is foolish to buy, sell a $20 bag of fertilizer and make 10% on it when you can sell $20 worth of biostimulant and make $10 on it because there's a 100% markup on some of those. Going to use something to stimulate your yard. My opinion, this is the way to go. And it's a, bi pardon me, <laughs> it is a plant growth regulator called Primo Max. That may have been a long way to go, but I wanted to differentiate biostimulants versus plant growth regulators. It's important so you know what you're getting, the, the characteristics, not claims, these are characteristics of trinexapac ethyl, which is the active ingredient in Primo, what those are, and it has to be proven. In addition, down below, and I know in the, in the introduction you're thinking, man, this guy's really selling something. There's an international publication down below that goes comprehensively into various plant growth regulators. Now, some plant growth regulators are what I call utility plant growth regulators, meaning like a highways department might use along a roadside or something like that, that they really want to just suppress the, the growth of the grass in order to not have to mow it. Primo, is it, it will do that. But for our application in turf grass management, Primo is the one that is for the finer turf grass and going to get you all the benefits of what I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to go into extreme about this. I'm going to tell you how to put the chemical out and how to apply it here in a second. But it's supported by the Michigan State study, the international study, and I'll also leave the label itself down below. So I just wanted that rock solid hard foundation because there's so much bullshit out there for these claims that these products, particularly biostimulants and fertilizers and whatever make, these are all proven and have to be proven that it would not be on the market. 
Anywho, let's get a little bit into how to apply it. Let's speak first to generic Primo, okay? Teenex is one of them. And I've seen some YouTube videos on Teenex. I'll give you my opinion on generics. And I'm talking all pesticides. I want you to understand what the difference is between a brand name and a generic. Yes, brand names are more expensive. And in majority of cases, in my opinion, on fungicides, herbicides, and there's not a whole lot of generic insecticides, but mostly those are the generics. I have not seen much significant difference in the performance in herbicides and fungicides. However, I have seen some performance issues between Primo and, uh, and some generic Primo products. Do keep that in mind. Yes, you could save some bucks, but the thing is, one of the characteristics with this, with a Primo application, it generally lasts three to four weeks. And the warmer it gets, the shorter that window is. It's closer to those three weeks. You guys in Texas, down south, when it's warmer, it wears off, if you will, a little sooner, closer to those three weeks. And that's the characteristics that I've seen in the generics, if you will. You're probably going, not going to get that extra time that Primo will give you. That has been my experience. Put on your yard whatever you want. I'll come over and help from bringing the beer, but <laughs> it's seriously, it's whatever you guys want. I just want to give you a heads up of that's what I've seen over the years. Now, as far as putting it out, you will need on the label, it says a half gallon to two gallons of spray volume. That's everything coming out of your sprayer. You probably should put this out with a backpack sprayer. Uh, you'll need at least that much to cover a thousand square feet. It is foliarly absorbed. So the closer you can get to that two gallons per thousand square feet, the better it's going to be. It's going to be more absorbed by the leaf blade. It is not absorbed by the roots. So you do need to get it on that leaf blade and get it coated. Uh, do not use a non-iron surfactant or any other surfactant with it. It doesn't call that on the label, so don't be doing that. Grass is stress. You want to use a lower rate. Now, we're in July 22nd right now when I'm putting this video together. Uh, you may have some stressed grass. And there again, it's one of the things you want to use with it is for stressed grass. You would probably want to start this regimen. One other benefit is it actually has seed head suppression in Poania in addition to suppressing it. That's where I used it a lot on putting greens for the seed heads come on from my Poania. You can imagine what a seed head would do to the putting quality on a golf green with Poania and then continue it once a month until the end of September. Now, one other characteristic about it. When you put it out, and let's say you miss, <laughs> okay, or you're at the end of the year, you are going to get a boost of growth because all of those carbohydrates are built up in that plant. That's why, that's how it gives it its cold tolerance and heat tolerance is because those carbohydrates are up in the plant, particularly cold tolerance. You'll, it, there again, it says that down in that scientific publication down below. So you're going to get this huge bang of growth. So if <laughs> you put it out in April, you forget to put it out in May or you're late in May, you're going to be bailing some grass those first week until you get Primo back down on it and get it working back in the plant. So do be aware of that. Rain fast in one hour, meaning you could put it out and then you can irrigate within an hour after applying it. It, it will get in the leaf blade by then. After four hours, after application, you can then mow your grass. Ideally, I'd try to schedule it. I'd probably schedule it maybe a day or two before your next mowing and put it on there so it really gets in that leaf blade. I wouldn't push the envelope, try to schedule accordingly. But there again, I apply it at the golf course greens. Generally, we mowed in the morning, then I did my application, and of course, we're mowing the next morning greens, so that's how I did it. If you're in dormancy or you have heat stress, and this goes to the stress, you do want to half the rate. So, I, and the rates are vary by species, and this can be put on any grass, but it does vary by species. I think it goes anywhere from uh, three quarter ounce to one ounce per thousand, depending on the species. See the label for that. Always follow the label on these. If you're not following the label, you're actually violating the law. Hot temperatures, I think I said this already, the, the window of application shrinks. So you probably will want to go out a third week, not that fourth week on it. Bermuda grass, because you are getting a lot more leaf on those Bermuda grass, there's going to be more per stem. And because of the horizontal growth increase that you will see with this, it will really fill in very, very nicely. So do keep that in mind. I know you guys, some of you guys like to mow this Bermuda grass very, very tight. This will actually make it much tighter. 
and there again darken the grass. One other thing, and probably the most important, this is not a cheap application. So I, you know, do be aware of that. And it's probably going to be maybe prohibitive for some of you. However, those of you who are watering your lawn, there's a golf course management article down below that I will leave using Primo with a, what they call a surfactant, which is basically a wetting agent. I have a wetting agent video. You guys can check that out. I tell you about the wetting agents. I make a recommendation on wetting agents. It's something that I used on golf course putting greens and some problem areas, particularly in cool season grasses on like hills and, slo and slopes and, and things of that nature that basically got dry during the year. It helped with localized dry spots. They do go through that. I go that through that video. They do that in the golf course management publication down below. Essentially what they did, I'll give you a quick summary. They applied half of the evapotranspiration rate on Bermuda grass for a time frame. And I can't remember the time frame off. You guys can check it out down below. And basically, essentially cutting their water needs on their grass in half. And they found that turf grass quality was not compromised that much. So you guys do see the price tag on this. I always do a cost per thousand square feet. I always take the price of the, the product, divide it by the amount, uh, the, the, the ounces in the container, then multiply that by the ounces per thousand square feet. I'll leave the math actually up here. And that gives you a cost per application. So that kind of gives you an idea if this is something you want to do. That's the math. But for you guys who are watering and you want this turf grass quality, and even those of you who do not have an irrigation system, cool or warm season grasses, how I do it in the mid-Atlantic is I don't have irrigation systems on any of my lawns. On this lawn, on my Bermuda grass, Bermuda grass up here, I don't have to water. Uh, last year, we had one of the worst droughts that we've had in the mid-Atlantic region in recent memory, and my Bermuda grass just cruised through it. I did a little syringing, but that was it. So what I do is, is I water, how I do it here on this lawn, is I water between storms just to get it to the next storm. This will take that edge off if you do want to go with a, with, with a Primo Max application. That'll take that edge off where you're going to have some of these spots that get hot. It's going to delay that dormancy, potential dormancy, significantly and give you, like when I was on vacation and I came back to a hot mess. <laughs> I mean, this yard, it grew like a champ. I actually have robot lawnmowers and I, I didn't run it because I didn't want it to get stuck. And I came back and it, this, this yard and it's recovered. And my Bermuda grass yard, the same thing. They recovered, but it will take that edge off and you don't have to mow your grass. So anyway, I'm just throwing that out at you as far as water savings. If you guys see the price tag on this, depending on your rate, depending on where you buy it, depending on what you do, generics versus name brand, all those factors. But those of you who, particularly if you're watering, this is a no-brainer. Anyway, and they also talked down in the publication a little bit about... Primo on ryegrass and how other plant growth regulators, and this is one of the things to keep in mind, other plant growth regulators they found on ryegrass actually lightens the leaf blade and not darkens it. Primo Max will darken the leaf blade, not lighten it. So do keep that in mind. But overall, what I would do, I'm going to leave a link here. I am going to leave a link in the first comment to my Amazon storefront where these plant growth regulators are. You can go there, you can grab them. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if Tmax is available on Amazon. I will look it up. I know Primo is, and it is in a reasonable size container. That's the great thing about, I try not to make recommendations on a container that's two and a half gallons that goes out at a quarter ounce rate and you're going to have it for four years. That's one of the reasons why I didn't think, because the only thing I had, the only time I ever saw Primo was in a gallon jug. And considering the rate on it, that will last you 128,000 square feet. That's a lot. So this one, I think it's a smaller one. It does come in a one gallon size. If you guys have large yards, you can do it there. So that is my growth regulator, Primo. Hope this helps. Um, I have got several other videos. If you want to like, subscribe, and click the golf ball down below, put you in the description. I'm agronomist Greg Phillips. Thanks for watching.